My name is Diana Ford, and I'm from Unity Labs. Uh, a little bit about our lab. Um, our mission is to look one to five years ahead uh, um, in relation to where the field's going in order to make sure that we're relevant and the engine's relevant um, and stays up to date. So uh, I wanted to cover today, my topic is how social interactions are changing storytelling production pipelines. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and um, mainly I wanted to cover the topic because I'm being asked quite a bit, um, how are we, what are we doing about, about entertainment pipelines, ever-changing entertainment pipelines? And I thought I'd just give you a brief overview. And for this, I've chosen um, three use cases from uh, the AR Fox Hackathon that was um, held, um, I think, maybe about eight months ago now, if I'm not wrong. Um, and the idea is just to give you an overview of the applications, um, specifically uh, broken it down to interfaces, data, and control flow, and just kind of running you through where we're at, where we want to go, and um, what the challenges are. So I've kept it very short and contained, uh, just to kind of uh, give you the insight into how we're thinking about uh, production pipelines. So start with some examples, uh, three of them. Is it the right term? Yeah. Uh, this is called the hollow cell. Okay. This is our hollow cell. Send to Keith. As you can see, a video started on that screen. Send to Chris. And then a video started on Chris's laptop. We can also use the names on the wall. And it will then start on Chris's laptop again. And this is our product, Shuttle Bus. Recording. And this is the second one. And then try to start at any point where the programming is as long as it's in It's called Holodinosaurus. Look at that. I'll move on to the third one. Field on. Rotate on. Video tap and field on. notice there's two types of uh, tools and applications that are being produced. Ones are related to um, mainly planning uh, in, pr in production for filmmaking. There's also a lot of stuff that came out for post-production work um, as well as um, you know, when you're on set. Um, and also, of course, we have the experiential part. So in relation to interfaces, where are we now? If you notice that there's two modes, we, we have exploratory mode and we have a, 
uh, where you know, we give the user an opportunity to go through the experience and we have uh, a God mode where we want to have full control over the processes. Where we want to go is uh, really exploration from a specific point of view. And uh, what are the challenges around this? Of course, uh, one would say, and we've all faced them, that they're hardware related. And probably this is why we still are at this stage that we are, we're constantly stopping at these wow demos and we just can't go beyond them. Um, so that's where we're at in relation to interfaces. So what about data? Where are we at in relation to data? So um, at the moment, let's talk about in relation to the um, the tools, the production pipeline tools. So for the planning, if you have storyboards right here, really we're interested in sequ uh, very much about spatial data, sequential data, and how we align it so we can do some previs for both 360 and for um, real-time animations. Um, for production, we're really interested in metadata and collecting as much metadata so we can organize these clips. And this is, this is great because we're at the stage that uh, you know, filmmaking is about uh, how well uh, you, know, you organize the data on set would save you a lot of time in post-production. Of course, then we have the post-production data um, related to continuity, which would allow you to cut the piece together and or, uh, you know, or achieve the di directorial vision. Uh, where we want to go is collecting meaningful data. And for that uh, to take place, we would focus, we'd need to focus on high fidelity and accuracy. These are kind of the two directions that, that we're looking at, and that poses a bunch of challenges related to, uh, well, now we need better sensors. Um, they need to be more accurate. They need to be more precise. And um, ontologies, how we organize this data. Um, we're, we're stuck at the moment. Uh, we have a very basic way of organizing scene graphs, organizing information, but what happens when we scale this? And finally, control flow. Um, what do I mean by control flow? The way we make decisions at the moment, um, these applications, the programs, how they make decisions, how they select, how we repeat ourselves, so basically the flow of the program. And right now it's pretty basic, right? We have actions and we have uh, pre or post conditions that go along with it and we tell our stories. Uh, but we want to go a step further. Um, this is no longer sufficient um, where, where we want to go is we want to decouple the intention from the action. And if you notice any application that you saw in any of the um, demos, it's pretty much, uh, it's very much the action is the intention. For example, uh, I want to walk around the dinosaur. Now I'm walking around the dinosaur. Um, to decouple it, what, what that would mean is that we're looking and we're getting, collecting data about our users, um, our players, the people in the environment. So what do they intend to do? What do they mean if, they, if they're looking around the dinosaur? Right? And also the human limitations uh, related to them existing in the space. And what I mean by that is related to all of our senses. So for example, when you have, uh, let's say, um, can somebody see as far if somebody's at the beginning of the room, somebody is at the, at the other end of the room? Do we know that they can't see us or do we know the extent that they can see us? Uh, do we know the extent that they can hear us? And all this information would um, ultimately offer us really complex um, experiences and is changing uh, the production pipelines, right? We want this information where we're going for social, we want to exist and we want to uh, use these tools and these experiences socially. We're pushing for it, um, at least from what I've seen so far. Everybody that tackles AR goes social. Um, and so what are the challenges with this is that we don't have the frameworks at all, right? So the epistemological frameworks are not in built yet and we need to come up with them. So uh, probably we can draw from robotics to find out what these should look like. Um, I've left out like the big elephant in the room, which is uh, communication and networking as issues, right? I felt that they need their own little session and you just really need to go in depth to cover the details. 
So what does this mean once we tackle where we're heading? And we, all, all these problems are, we can, we, we're going to figure them out. It's, it's, it's just a question of time. Um, then, then we're getting into some really interesting territory about the future. Here's an interesting quote. Studies have found that people will sometimes misremember events from traditional media as real life experiences. So uh, we're, we're, we're really talking about memory and the way we perceive the environment here and cognitive limitations that we have. So we haven't really, we really just barely touched the surface on cognitive related experiments. Um, cognitive dissonance is a big one, and we're not talking about it right now. It's like we, we exist, we have our peace of mind if we have actions and beliefs, and they're coupled, and they're, um, you know, and the minute that you introduce um, an inequality in a belief and an action, we t what we tend to do is we tend to kind of try to either, uh, um, you know, take on actions that will bring out this equilibrium. And what I mean by that is, uh, just as a, just to bring it from a less abstract to a real example, uh, uh, just you tell yourself that drinking soda is bad, but, but then um, you, know, you go do it. So you have to align your belief and actions. It's like, oh, I do it because you know, I have to stay awake. I need the energy. And so um, these are cognitive issues that are gonna come and are gonna become very, um, very much the, 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 experience, the, the highlight of our experiences of these AR and VR experiences. And we're not tackling them at the moment, right? We're still, we're still at WOW demo stage. And so uh, that, that's kind of really a very uh, short and um, um, I think compact overview of where I see the production pipelines changing in relation to uh, the response to including the social aspect in them for AR. Um, I'm running and directing a one-day symposium as part of a VR hackathon that Fox is holding in November. So if you have any related information um, and are interested in production pipelines, please get in touch. Uh, thank you. <laughs>